Back in 2008, a virus called Reaper was identified in Scotland, resulting in the deaths of thousands of individuals within a week. In response, the United Kingdom sealed its borders and constructed a barrier around the country. Scottish citizens, however, were displeased with being isolated and congregated at the barricade to demand their rights and liberty. The military personnel guarding the wall resorted to gunfire when they observed an infected person, causing contaminated blood to scatter on those around him. The crowd became enraged and engaged in combat with the soldiers, who fired indiscriminately without regard for the possibility of infecting civilians, as their primary objective was to keep people from leaving the area. In close proximity, a desperate mother tried to safeguard her child, but an unintended bullet struck her daughter, causing her to lose an eye. The young girl survived the harrowing incident, prompting her mother to plead with an army helicopter crew to transport her daughter to safety. Before they left, the mother left a letter for her child to cherish in the future. However, as time passed, a cure for the virus remained elusive, leading to Scotland's gradual transformation into a dystopian society where people resorted to consuming rats and even each other to survive. Rampant looting, pillaging, and murder became commonplace on the streets. Although Britain initially boasted about containing the virus, it was widely criticized by the international community for abandoning those trapped behind the wall to their fate. As a result, Britain's economy deteriorated into severe poverty, widespread unemployment, civil unrest, and significant economic instability. After 27 years since the initial outbreak, the young girl who survived had grown up into a woman named Eden, who now works as a government special agent. Together with her partner John, she sneaks aboard a vessel owned by a slave trader. Upon separating, John is inadvertently spotted, leading to a gunfight. The trader murders all the buyers, and while a female assistant runs off with the gold, John is captured. Upon hearing the commotion, Eden decides to toss her synthetic eye into the hallway to gather information since it's linked to her watch. She then approaches the trader with her weapon drawn, causing him to recoil in fear and unintentionally shoot John. Seeking retribution, Eden immediately kills the traitor. Following the mission's completion, domestic security chief Nelson inquires about John's whereabouts, prompting Eden to hand over the footage from her watch as an explanation. Eden gazes at the letter her mother left her, lamenting her inability to recall her mother's appearance and yearning to enter Scotland to locate her address. However, domestic security chief Nelson advises her to rest. The following day, during a police raid on a criminal hideout, officials are stunned to discover a room filled with severely ill individuals. Senior official Canaris briefs Prime Minister Hatcher about the reappearance of the Reaper virus, which is now spreading in London. Hatcher promptly convenes a meeting to discuss potential responses, with the notion of enforcing a lockdown in London being suggested. Despite agreeing with the proposal, Nelson warns that such a measure could lead to widespread panic, similar to what occurred in Scotland. Nelson is then ushered into a separate office to review confidential information and discovers that a satellite had detected survivors appearing on Glasgow's streets over the last three years. Given that they had presumed everyone behind the wall had died, the only plausible explanation is that someone beyond the wall had discovered a cure. Consequently, Nelson must assemble a team of operatives to cross the wall and locate the cure. After some time, Nelson presents a mission to Eden, which she accepts despite the risks involved. Just before departing, she entrusts Nelson with her mother's letter to keep it safe. Canaris provides Eden with more information about the mission, revealing that she needs to locate Dr. Kane or his laboratory, as he was the leading researcher working on a cure. A team will be assigned to her, and they will have 46 hours to return, failing which London will be left to perish. Eden is also provided with a GPS beacon to ensure the government can track her location at all times. Meanwhile, Hatcher declares martial law, causing the residents of London to panic prematurely. Canaris advises Hatcher to abandon infected individuals to their fate since attempting to save large groups would lead to the virus spreading beyond the city. Three hours later, Eden arrives at the wall and meets the team assigned to accompany her, which consists of soldiers, doctors, and a substantial amount of weaponry. After preparing themselves, the team boards two tanks and waits for the guards to break the seal on the door, allowing them to enter Glasgow. Since it's quite dark outside, one of the tanks accidentally collides with an obstacle. To illuminate the area, the team fires a flare and discovers cows grazing in the vicinity. As they continue moving forward, Dr. Talbot plays a recording of Kane, who had reported to the government during the quarantine until the power went out. Kane explains that he and his guards took refuge in a hospital, and that the survivors resorted to cannibalism, leading to a medieval scenario. The team decides to head to the hospital, and as they traverse the streets, they notice numbers painted on the doors of houses indicating the number of people who once lived there. 
supposedly, the government was going to send aid. Upon reaching the hospital, Eden uses her special eye to ensure it's safe before entering the building to search for Kane's research. The drivers remain in the tanks while Chandler notices a girl wandering nearby. He informs the team of her presence via the communicators, and although Eden advises against making contact due to the risk of infection, Chandler ignores her and puts on a suit to approach the girl. Unfortunately, the girl passes out in his arms, causing Eden to panic. However, Talbot convinces her to isolate the girl for further study. The team continues their search, and when they enter a lab, they are suddenly ambushed by a group called the Marauders. A brutal battle ensues, resulting in casualties on both sides, prompting Eden to order an evacuation. After Chandler places the girl in an isolation pod, the tanks attempt to move around the hospital to retrieve the team, but encounter more Marauders on the street. Molotov cocktails are hurled at the tanks, causing a commotion that awakens the girl. Seizing the opportunity, she attacks Chandler from behind. The girl's attack causes the tank to crash into a building, and Chandler, in his last moments, drops a grenade that kills the girl as well. Eden takes the team to the elevator to escape the marauders, shoots the cables, and activates a foam grenade to cushion the landing. The second tank arrives, but as they exit the building, a marauder shoots an arrow, killing the driver and causing the tank to crash. The team continues on foot, but they are soon surrounded by more marauders, leading to another brutal fight. Talbot is injured, and the team tries to provide cover while a doctor tends to his wounds. However, they quickly run out of ammunition. Soldiers Sterling and Norton manage to escape through a dark alley, but Eden and Talbot are captured, while the rest of their soldiers perish trying to defend themselves. A woman named Viper announces that Eden must be taken to their leader, Sol, before knocking her unconscious. A few hours later, Eden wakes up to find herself chained inside a cell. The leader of the Marauders, Sol, begins to physically assault her in an attempt to extract information. Eden reveals that her team comes from beyond the wall, which surprises Sol because he didn't believe Kane's claim that there was nothing on the other side. Sol attempts to kiss Eden, but she bites him, prompting him to order his guards to keep her alive as he sees her as their ticket to freedom. Viper destroys Eden's GPS, while one of the marauders steals her watch. Meanwhile, Sterling and Norton are approaching the area. Sol throws a wild party for his fellow marauders, during which they cook and consume Talbot. While in the cell, Eden notices the wires protruding from the broken GPS, and uses them to pick the lock on her handcuffs. When a guard approaches her cell to offer her some Talbot meat, Eden seizes the opportunity to grab him and forces him to open the door. Following her escape from the cell, Eden kills the guards, retrieves her stolen watch, and tries to navigate her way out. In a nearby cell, she finds Callie, who discloses that she is Kane's daughter and can help Eden locate him if she frees her. As they are speaking, Viper enters and initiates another fight with her dual swords. Eden defends herself, taking one of the swords and pushing Viper towards the door. Callie seizes Viper, and Eden uses this opportunity to kill her. Afterward, Eden and Callie flee together, and Eden contacts Norton to meet them at the train station. The girls reach the station before Norton and Sterling and meet Callie's friend, Joshua, who threatens Eden with his bow until Callie persuades him to trust her. Meanwhile, Norton and Sterling are surrounded by marauders on motorcycles and a bus, leading to a high-speed chase through the city. When they eventually reach the station, Joshua commences the train's departure. Sterling and Norton sprint after the train while evading attacks from the marauders. Norton manages to leap onto the train, but Sterling takes too long, so Eden jumps off to take down an enemy biker. Norton helps them board, and they escape safely. During the journey, Callie reveals that she can guide them to Kane, but she cannot accompany them because Kane will kill her. It turns out that Sol is Kane's son, and Kane has become paranoid since Sol started a war against him. Nowadays, Kane kills anyone who opposes him. After a few hours, the group disembarks from the train and walks a few miles through the mountains using a shortcut that passes through an old military facility. When they enter the forest, they unexpectedly encounter Telamon, a knight who happens to be Kane's executioner. Joshua, Sterling, and Callie attempt to flee, but they are surrounded by more knights who kill Joshua and capture the other two. Norton intends to shoot Telamon, but Eden orders him to surrender because getting captured is the quickest way to reach Kane. The group is taken to an old castle where a community of survivors live, following medieval culture. They meet Kane in his office, and he proceeds to explain that there is no cure for the virus. Some people are just immune to it. Kane always suspected that the government would send more people, which is why he hid here with his followers. He has accepted that the outside world is too corrupt. Meanwhile, riots break out in London, and many people are dying from the virus. 
An infected man breaks into the British security headquarters, kills the guards, and uses their fingerprints and eyeballs to bypass the digital locks. He reaches the main office and attempts to kill Hatcher, but Nelson intervenes and shoots him. After the man's blood sprays and hits Hatcher's face, he fears that he may have contracted the infection. Canaris instructs the guards to isolate Hatcher in his office due to the worsening riots outside. Feeling hopeless, Hatcher decides to end his life. Meanwhile, Kane considers his daughter impure and takes her to the dungeons to burn her. Eden and her companion spend the night in a cell, and the following day, Kane orders Eden to fight Telamon for his own entertainment. Kane admits that he was once an idealist but lost all hope after losing his family when the castle walls closed. He wants Eden to experience the same pain. Eden is unarmed, while Telamon is in armor. Telamon attacks with his spear and shield, leaving Eden with few opportunities to strike back. As the guards move to transfer Callie from her cell, Norton and Sterling overpower them and steal the keys to make their escape. They make their way to the armory to find weapons and explosives. During the fight, Eden spots a guard watching them and disarms him, using his weapon to kill Telamon. This infuriates Kane, who orders his guards to execute all the prisoners. However, Norton and Sterling create a distraction by detonating a tower, causing chaos among the spectators. The trio takes advantage of the commotion to escape through the kitchen, knocking out anyone who gets in their way until they find an emergency exit. The group makes their way into the arena, where an archer is ready to shoot Eden. Norton intervenes and shoots the archer with his gun, and they escape on stolen horses. Knights give chase, but the group reaches the mountain shortcut first. They discover a generator and turn on the lights, revealing a crate containing a brand new Bentley. While Sterling fills up the car with fuel, Eden finds a phone in a box, and Norton manipulates the electricity to close the gate and keep the knights outside. Unfortunately, the knights enter the tunnel and shoot Norton with arrows, causing him to fall before reaching the car. With the gate about to close, Eden, Callie, and Sterling are forced to leave him behind. As they drive away, Eden contacts Nelson and informs him that they have the package. She also speaks to Canaris and asks him to trace the call before leaving the phone on for the remainder of the journey. A few hours later the group is closing in on the wall when they are suddenly pursued by marauders in a police car. Eden speeds up to avoid being hit, but a marauder on a bike crashes into her windshield. Eden decides to stop the car and shoot at the police car's tires, causing it to plummet off a cliff. However, the marauders continue to chase them, led by Sol. Refusing to be intimidated, Eden reverses her car and drives straight at the enemy convoy, forcing them to move aside to avoid a collision. A new chase ensues as they head towards the wall. When they get close, Sol jumps into the Bentley, followed by another marauder, and a fight breaks out in the car. In the chaos, they accidentally shoot a biker, causing him to crash into another marauder's vehicle. Sterling tries to pull the marauder out of the car, but he holds on tightly. The situation takes a turn for the worse when the protagonist accidentally crashes into an abandoned vehicle with the door, resulting in the death of one of their comrades when hit by a marauder car. While one team member attempts to clear the path, another engages in a fight against Sol, a marauder, and eventually succeeds in pushing him out of the car. Despite Sol's persistence in attempting to harm them, Eden manages to evade him and drives through a bus full of marauders, causing it to explode and killing Sol in the process. The remaining marauders are left stranded on the other side of the fire, allowing Eden and her team to drive away. Upon reaching their destination, they encounter Canaris, who arrives by aircraft. Eden secretly records their conversation with her watch and pretends to align with Canaris, who reveals his willingness to sacrifice civilians and his plan to take credit for discovering a cure after eliminating those infected. Despite Sterling's distrust of Canaris, Eden maintains her leadership role and instructs him to accompany Callie in creating a vaccine using her blood. Canaris extends an invitation to Eden to join his team, but she declines. Some time later, Nelson travels to Glasgow and locates Eden at the address from the letter, which was once her home. Although Eden still cannot recall her mother, she now possesses photographs and no longer requires the letter. Furthermore, she provides Nelson with the recording of Canaris' admission, allowing him to bring him to justice. Nelson departs and Eden chooses to remain behind once more. Shortly afterward, news of Canaris' confession spreads, and Eden retrieves Sol's head from the crash site to present to the marauders as a symbol of her triumph. The marauders are initially stunned into silence but quickly erupt into ecstatic celebration, accepting Eden as their new leader.